Nowhere in the U.S. will a city give you 50 grand to open a business. In fact, a lot of Midwestern cities, a lot of Florida cities, for example, the ones that are really doing well, you're going to have to get into some bidding wars to get some storefronts because we're seeing so many stores and businesses moving out of San Francisco and they're going to so many other places. I mean, just in my city alone, it's not even that big of a city. It's like 300,000, 400,000-ish population. We are getting a ton of California individuals coming here. We're seeing a ton of license plates. Every single storefront that's being built eventually gets rented out within just a few weeks. And there's even some bidding wars on offices, apartments, and like I said, storefronts. But the only place I'll give you money to open a store is San Francisco, and I really advise you guys to not do it. Yes, 50K may seem a lot, but if you're opening a business, it easily exceeds that amount. So what's happening is San Francisco is starving right now. They have zero tourism. Guys, San Francisco right now is basically the only city in the US like the only major city in the US, let me correct that, that actually has a declining tourism industry. I mean, even freaking Los Angeles with Skid Row and all that different stuff, they actually still have a pretty thriving you know, recreation and tourism industry, surprisingly. And if you look at Chicago, as bad as that is, they're still getting really crazy good tourism. And San Diego, they're trying to fix things up too, and they even banned tents on the streets. And they actually have a very vibrant tourism industry, surprisingly. But San Francisco is the only major one that's actually declining at a rapid pace. And partly the reason why is a lot of people say they go to San Francisco, they don't see any stores. It's basically a ghost town. And it's a domino effect, right? So if stores close, people leave, tourism leaves as well. And then when tourism is gone and people leave, more stores close down. It's like a massive feedback loop. As long as you stop one of these ones, these actions, Usually, it, the city starts picking back up. So right now, what San Francisco is doing is trying to get as many businesses moving back into San Francisco as possible because the office vacancies are 30 to 40%, but in my opinion, it's 50% because the leases haven't ended yet. You know, first floor retail centers, some people are saying that some neighborhoods have a vacancy of 60%. That pretty much means AKA ghost town. And I don't recommend taking this offer because one, you're going to probably get robbed multiple times and you're not going to be making any money. And two, like you're not going to get any business, guys. San Francisco is already so screwed up right now. I mean, the policies aren't ever going to change. When you see Nordstrom, Whole Foods, and those big anchor retailers leave, something is up. When your local Old Navy leaves in San Francisco, maybe it's time to pack up as well because you're not going to be making any cash. So many businesses in San Francisco, small mom and pop stores, there's always a couple closing down every single day, and that's actually in a very, very fast pace. So do not be a sucker and open store in San Francisco. Though I loved the city before the pandemic, it still had its problems, but now it has fully deteriorated to degeneracy. There's people smoking crack on the streets, and like I said before, tech workers are leaving in droves. Check this out. San Francisco's downtown would never go back to the way it was. And this is by Salesforce CEO. If you guys don't know what the company Salesforce, the ticker is CRM. This is a company worth 200 to 300 billion dollars. And Salesforce also owns the Salesforce Tower in San Francisco, the tallest skyscraper, which is more than 50% vacant right now. And essentially what the CEO is saying that they obviously deep down, they regret building the Salesforce Tower because they're never making that money back. And at the same time, they kind of know that the city is dead, okay? And it really amazes me. Like, so many stores leave, and there's not a single policy change. Now, that is crazy. Look at San Diego. As much as San Diego is a dump, they're at least changing, right? Apparently, in San Diego, homelessness and the tents are encroaching the tourist traps in downtown, so they in implemented a ban on homeless encampments in many locations of the city, and they're trying to save the businesses and tourism so they can actually make money and then help the homeless individuals because now they're actually setting a few areas in the city where it's for tents only. So San Diego's not doing a good job. No way I'm saying that, but at least they're doing something, right, to save the businesses. And San Diego's businesses are not flowing out like San Francisco's. And also check this out. We also have Alto, driver-friendly Lyft and Uber Challenger. They're leaving San Francisco. They're not the only ones. 
We're seeing Meta canceling their event next year. IBM is also canceling their event next year. So that's two major conferences from the Fortune 500 list that are leaving. That's massive. And Uber is also ditching about a third of their you know, square footage as well in San Francisco. Nobody wants it. Okay, PayPal is also considering leaving. And it's crazy, okay? A lot of these companies are leaving quietly. Like when they leave, they don't like get the news to come and talk to them and stuff. Like when they leave, they leave quietly and leave and just open shop somewhere else. This is why places like Las Vegas, Austin, and Miami are getting so many startups in the tech sector. And this is mostly from the expense of San Francisco. And also check some of this crazy stuff out. Okay, we also have San Francisco struggling to come back with hotel and tourism. In fact, there's even a massive company in San Francisco, Park Hotels and Resorts. They own two hotels combined as a cater of 3,000 rooms. It's probably one of the biggest hotels in the U.S. And Park Hotels pretty much defaulted on a $750 million loan. And their excuse was there's no more tourism. Nobody's there, so they're already losing money. Cash flow is basically negative. And then also the building itself is worth half the amount they paid for meaning their mortgage is probably worth two to three times more than the actual worth of the building. So why the hell would they ever keep paying for the building? So they defaulted. Westfield, the biggest mall in San Francisco, has closed. This is honestly just, in my opinion, incredible. I've never seen a city with so many good things going for it just pretty much threw itself at the trash can and then pretty much lit the city on fire. And that's what it feels like, right? And it's a shame because this is one of the best tech hubs in the world. Like all the companies, all the tech that you guys use, a lot of them did come from San Francisco. A lot of them really flourished in San Francisco, but now San Francisco is no longer a tech scene, but a place that's diseased and full filled with homeless individuals, you know, people doing drugs. There's open air drug markets everywhere. And like I said before, a lot of the guys who work in tech would rather move online and leave San Francisco. And that's exactly what's going on. I mean, look at this, okay? San Francisco controller report finds nearly half the commercial sidewalks had feces in 2022. And like I said before, there's still a bunch of feces on the sidewalk. In fact, some people say there's even more feces on the sidewalk in certain locations. And what I'm saying here is San Francisco isn't even that bad of an area. Like the location's actually pretty phenomenal. Like, it's a peninsula. Uh, in the north, you got like one county, it's Napa Valley. In the south, you got like the guys like Stanford, you got Mountain View, you got the big tech companies, right? You got like Oracle, Apple, Google, and then you have San Francisco itself, you know, north, west, east, you all have water. It's pretty, pretty nice. Weather's great. You know, it's such an exclusive, nice looking place, right? I mean, it shouldn't really have any problems to attract talent, but you have to really screw the city up so bad that these guys are not willing to put up with it. Like, I mean, the Tenderloin District well, has always been an open air drug market for several decades. People were willing to put up with it, but now with the Tenderloin being bigger and bigger and spreading out and pretty much crime being rampant and nobody cares, stores are being robbed, okay? Nobody's coming here. And guess what? It's summer, right? So you should be seeing a massive inflow of wealthy Chinese tourism. But surprisingly, San Francisco barely has any Chinese tourists. Because if you head over towards the Chinese blogs in China, guess what they say? They say San Francisco is a third world city. They literally say that. And they say they compare San Francisco with places like Australia, places like Japan, Singapore, and also you know Italy, Spain, Portugal, like these other places they visit. They all say the same thing. San Francisco is the only one of open air drug markets and poop and feces and urine on the floor. And they're really shocked by that. And, and that, that looks bad on us, guys. We really need to fix this up. And I really hope San Francisco fix, 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 you know, fixes itself up. You know, this is one of the better cities out there, but not anymore. I would visit again if they just clean up 70% of what's going on right now. But what a lot of people are saying is it's probably not going to happen. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment below. And before guys leave, make sure to check out the private Discord server, guys. Patreon link below for some amazing trades. We're trading live on a daily basis every single day. And one of our traders here is making a lot of money. Look at this. Last week, nine total signals. Only two losing signals. The other ones are winning. Like Roblox calls made almost 150%. So trade with us, guys. Make some money with us. We trade live on a daily basis. And we have several traders on board. And $10, you can't get anything cheaper than that. Patreon link below.